Hello and welcome to the Luxury Lounge. That's right, every Thursday we head in the lounge, we shut the door, and we air our grievances with the world. And I say it every week, let me say it again, there's no grievance too big or too small or too frivolous. Anything that you want to complain about. The luxury of the Luxury Lounge is being able to air your complaints without someone looking at you and going, na, 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 there's bigger problems. No. There are no bigger problems in the lounge. There are your problems. And I want to say, if you want to send in your luxury lounge issue, you got to email to jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. That's jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Title it Luxury Lounge. Give us a little sauce. Let us know what it's about. Shelby, my boy on the ones and twos, he's here. Play, you know, Shelby has no mic. There's, there's been complaints that Shelby doesn't have a mic. And Shelby wants to live in the shadows. Shelby wants to be the man behind the curtain. And we get that. And I love that. So Shelby's here. Don't worry. But he's the one reading your email. So make sure it is properly properly titled, properly lengthed. Uh, send it to jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Also, we're on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, welcome. Welcome to the show. So happy to be here. We have a look at the backdrop. We we have we have we have zhuzhed this up as the old Jewish women would say. We've zhuzhed. Now people, subscribe to the YouTube. If you're listening on podcast apps and you're not a YouTube person, give it a shot. Give it a look. Go subscribe to the YouTube channel so it's there. I'm putting up stand up there as well. So it's like my channel. So it's not just Luxury Lounge. It's both J Train podcast and Luxury Lounge podcast and some stand up and some fun videos. So it's all there for you to like, you know. When would I look at someone's YouTube page? Sunday night, late at night, can't get to bed. You're sitting there. What do I do? Ugh, I got work tomorrow. Put your brain on the shelf with your Papa JT, the Wizard of Haas, the Board Lord, the King of Brunch. That's right. The Climax Czar. That's me. Very excited to have today's guest. Before we get to them, I have some dates. If you're in Columbus, Ohio, I'm going to be there tomorrow and Saturday. So Columbus, and, and jaredfree.com is where you get all the tickies. Bring the group chat. That's what it's all about. Jaredfree.com. Uh, Columbus, Ohio. Newark, New Jersey. Madison, Wisconsin. Tampa. La Jolla. Huntsville. Nashville. Dayton. Albany. Jaredfree.com. Jaredfree.com. Very excited for today's guest. His first time in the lounge. I think first time on the pot. You've been on the podcast before. You've been on the J Train version. I was on the J Train podcast. Yes. And let me just say really quickly, there were no kumquats. No kumquats. In the J Train. This is a this pro is kumquat. This is all brand new. This is a, we have put work and money. There's been investment made. You guys, listen. I am investing in you, the listener, the viewer, to come and see my kumquats. I feel Sean classy. Pat- I feel classy. Sean Patton, thank you for coming on. I'm I'm so happy you're here. I mean, I should say thank you for having me. I'm in like I feel like I'm in a jungle or right, but like a but like a classy jungle. Classy. Not where I'm going to get mauled by some you know bitchy animal. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah. Oh, God. oh God! Look at just the idea of it, uh, bitchy uh, animal, bitchy animal. Just <laughs> like you're in the jungle and just a cougars growl. <laughs> a cougar comes out of you, growl. Sean, did you leave out the trash? Sorry, just starts being a bitch. Take my thigh. <laughs> Sean, yeah, everyone go follow Sean. He's hysterical, so funny. I a joy. Let me say this: if I was on your movie poster. If I was on your stand-up poster, okay. it would say, a joy to watch on stage, Jared Freed, the J Train Podcast. I, it's I, a joy. Because not... sometimes you watch stand-up and you go, this isn't fun. I have fun watching you. Thank it, you. That is, Thank you're you. a fun... And I, I, you know, I don't even know how to compliment stand-ups anymore. There was a stand-up last night. He came on stage. I was like, great set. And he goes, great. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck you want me to say. <laughs> I was like, but so, I, I think this yeah. is, a, a, to me, the greatest compliment is like, you're going to go to a, a Sean Patton show and you're going to go, what a fucking fun time I just had. That is a great compliment. That also is like a, that is a, that person, they, I'll um, tell you who it was afterwards. I, I, and it I won't surprise I, you. Oh, I, I kind of already, I, you kind of did a good impression of them. <laughs> I don't know if you realize how okay. good your impression really? kind of was. Well, what, it's like, oh, okay. Great. Great. Like, oh, sorry. That's not good enough. I, I don't know what to say to you anymore like and some people like the, the thing about stand-up is like it's a dumb art form to me it's a- <laughs> if you think about it like some dude who's underdressed is gonna tell you his thoughts on stage if right, you think right. of it and you go why do i want to listen to it like i always think like when i'm doing a bit i'm like who would listen to me fucking talk about this you know and I, when i like i'm like how do i make it more personal so i'm like okay let's change this bit into a that's that's my insecurities yeah but 
I would say, you know, sometimes if you say to someone, it's so much fun to watch you on stage, they go, well, what about, you know, you didn't like how I changed the verse <laughs> of the, the tense of the English that I spoke. It's like, oh, I didn't know I was talking to fucking Bill Shakespeare. I, you know, and that and Bill Shakespeare would be, a ter- apparently wouldn't have written any of his own material. Really? Apparently Bill, Bill Shakespeare didn't write most of his stuff. He was a hack? No, he, no, no. he just didn't credit someone. Wow. Apparently, most of Shakespeare's stuff was written by... But that's... This is when the internet has gotten too large. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we know too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't need to know... I need to know William Shakespeare is William Shakespeare, and I don't need to know that he hacked all his shit from, you know, Abe Froman, the Sausage King of Chicago. (laughs) You see? That's gotten too... It's just connecting... Yeah. This is... In the future societies, we'll look back and be like, did you know that William Shakespeare? <laughs> yes. uh, well, it's like, you know. Once stayed home sick from school <laughs> yeah. and stole his friend's dad's Ferrari. That's right. And that's where he came up with the idea for Romeo and Juliet. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Sloan was yeah. the original Juliet. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Sloan, Steve. Is there anyone hotter than that? Than Sloan? What was her like? Was it Sloan Stevens? Was that her name? Shelby Sloan. Yeah, dude. I mean,. Mr. Stevens, because remember yeah. that guy. Did, that dude's in. So, you look, that actor who played Sloane. Don't know where she is. These where days. is she? Um, Matthew Broderick's Matthew Broderick. Right? Yes, but that other dude, the guy who played Cameron, dude, he was in Spin City. He's in a bunch of shit. He's in Succession now. He's a, like a fantastic actor. Yeah, man. Yeah, he he. I I, yeah. I remember seeing him in like Spin City, and you go, there he is. Mm-hmm. Like. How he, it's got to be tough to get away from roles like that. Well, I mean, as an actor, you got to think about like, think about every actor, like the dude who you watch Breaking Bad or. I've seen episodes. I, I, I never got into any of that stuff. No, no. There's, there's just, that show is full of actors who were just around for decades. Yeah. They were small parts of movies, uh, one or two episodes of a TV series here. In a commercial there. Yeah. Just like small parts. I'm talking not for three or four well, years, for 30 years. And are now big major players in hit TV shows. Do you, th- do you think of the money of that ever? Like I was watching a State Farm commercial. Dude. And Oscar from The Office isn't Oscar. He's mm. an actor in yeah. a State Farm commercial. And I'm assuming he's getting big bucks. It's a national campaign. We all know this. Like, but you go. The Office wasn't enough. You're on one of the most iconic TV shows. I know you as Oscar. Like, shouldn't yeah. my recognition just be able to ship you off into retirement? Like, I, I and and this is the weird part. It's like I couldn't if I saw him on the street. I couldn't be like, dude, what's your financial situation? Like, that that would be insane I and would rude. Love but love to know. Wouldn't you yeah, love to all, know? That's all I want to know. <laughs> that's all I want to know. Like, if you could ask Leonardo DiCaprio one question, I want to be like, what do you know? What do you want? What's the What's How, the money situation? Yeah, what's, what's How did like? this all work out? Like, <laughs> it'd be rude because I have people. You know, for stand up, people go, do you get paid for this? Like, yeah. the, 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 what the hour show that I just made you laugh every ten seconds for? Dude, I would hope I got paid. It's for only it. a matter of time before, because like now everybody seems obsessed with because everybody's trying to do content grabs. Yeah. of like the Q and As during their set. Oh, so there are it's people. Like, it's so only really a matter of time. Like, how much are you making this weekend? <laughs> And then someone's like, ah. Well, people people are doing, so, yeah. you know, to let people behind the curtains, like, all these comics, we're putting out clips, and that's why you should, I mean, Sean, your clips are, again, let me say, fun. You're going to enjoy a yeah. Sean Patton follow. Go follow on Instagram, at Mr. Sean Patton, at Mr. Sean Patton. Go follow me, Sean Patton, all his dates. He's got two albums. Here's how it works with the albums. You are streaming on a music service right now. I know you are. I know you. I know you. I know you. I know you. It's me, Papa JT, Uncle J Train, Climax R. You use Spotify. You use Apple Music. If you search Sean Patton's name, two albums are waiting for you. Waiting. Laughs are awaiting. They're there. They're there. He's wearing the shirt. This is one of them's called Scuttlebutt. It's named after. This is a strip club in Slidell, Louisiana. That that album's named after. Do you love being from Louisiana? I like being from New Orleans. I don't like Louisiana itself can be a rough a rough patch in certain parts. But do you love like I'm going to New Orleans yeah. next week? Um, yeah, I'm doing Tulane. I'm doing a show at the the school, the McAllister Auditorium. I think so. Holy shit! So I'm doing it's a, a big sh- deal. Anybody? Hey, New Orleanians, go see J Train. Well, thank you. Go uh, see him. This will already be out. 
<laughs> I hope you but already saw him. There's just like cool quirks. Yeah. Like you could walk into a bar and feel like you're at someone's house having a drink. You could. You could I walk f- into someone's house and feel like you're at a bar too. <laughs> <laughs> like it goes both ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I feel yeah. like that's got to be something because you and I we're drinkers. We like to we have like a drink. To have you gotta enjoy that, no? Yeah, I mean, like New Orleans is an awesome city. I'm not saying Louisiana. I mean, there's parts. I don't, Louisiana I don't take it that, that way. I don't, there's you know. parts of Louisiana that suck real bad. You know who you are. Um, <laughs> but then there are parts that are fucking cool. But like New Orleans is its own. It's like a, it's a city. It's a yeah. European style city. It's its own existence. I'd say New Orleans and Miami are the two cities in America where I feel like I'm in another country. You know, Tennessee and, Williams, the playwright. Okay, went. He once said there are only three cities in America: New York. San Francisco and New Orleans. The rest is all Cleveland. Now, Clevelanders, <laughs> I don't necessarily side with that sentiment. Well, hold on, Cleveland's all right. Cleveland, good for you. Got used in this famous bit. Yeah, you're the you're the poster child of yeah. we have a target on the corner. Yeah. You know, no, but yeah. I I would agree with Tennessee. And also also uh, you know the Guardians. It's a fun. <laughs> it's a fun name now. Oh yeah, I forgot they changed the, the Cleveland. Name. The Cleveland Gu- named after the statues on the bridge. Oh, is that what it is? So there are statues on the bridge that are called the Guardians that guard the bridge, and they're like a famous looking. Oh, that's what it came I after. It was the Guardians of the Galaxy. Th- that's what it was. I thought you're was, right. No, was you're right. It's Chris Pratt. Appropriate teams after uh, <laughs> Marvel franchises. Well, I I, <laughs> I I did think that with like the Kraken. You know the the Seattle oh, the, Kraken. The, the it's team, like they, they were like, we can't fuck up these names. Mm-hmm. We can't make them anti anyone. So we're just going mythical. I mean, I would not have been surprised if it would have been the Washington Avengers. I'd be cool with it. It's better, I mean, I'm it's a better than fan. the Commanders. Commanders. I mean, the Washington. Avengers. The Washington football team became kind of cool and kitschy. It did. People love kitsch. It did. Everyone go follow Sean. It did actually, it did become a little too like hip though. It got hip. It did sound like something like, so I'm like, oh, this, they might as well call it the Washington sports ball. (laughs) The Washington sports ball team. Yeah, because you'd have people go, you know, the football team. Yeah, yeah. And And you'd be like, what, what, who? Yeah. yeah. No, you don't know the football team? The Washington, but it sounded like you could be like, whatever, football team. And it was like, (laughs) okay, we get it. You're too cerebral for sports. (laughs) You fucking dweeb. Everyone go follow Sean Penn. Yeah, please do. At. Mr. Sean Patton, me, Sean Patton. The albums are out there. Are you ready to go to the lounge? I'm, I've been dying to get into Do you have lounge. a complaint that you'd like to air? Because I have a complaint that I want to get into. Before we, get, before we get into the listener complaints, we get into our own complaints. Well, you, I mean, that's it. I mean, as okay. the host of the show, I want to I will. Give I mean, I want to make sure I do. I had forgotten to explain the complaints. Okay. Here's my complaint, my luxury complaint. You ready? Yeah. Hit the music. Jared, he has some problems. Jared, he's got some issues to do. Get off his chest right now. Jared has a lot of issues. Jared has a issue with a lot of... Uh-oh. Are we good? Well... Thank you. I didn't know you knew Frank Sinatra Jr. I, I'm him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that you? <laughs> that was me. My that beautiful. was me. Yeah, listen. My luxury complaint is me on a Monday. Every Monday, I do this thing where I'm like, I'm going to be gluten-free, no carbs. I'm going to work out every day. I'm going to start reading. I'm going to better myself. And then I get to Thursday, and I am immediately disappointed with myself. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I don't just wake up on a Monday and just go, you're the same fucking loser you were last week and you're going to be the same fucking loser at the end of this week. So deal with it. Like we need to start setting the Monday bar lower. My real complaint is I'm setting my Monday bar too high. Whereas it, why don't I just say to myself, hey, Jared, why don't you get seven hours of sleep a night? Hey, Jared, oh. let's, this will be the week that you go to the gym three times. And then you get to four and you can go, wow, I'm a great person. It's really my mentality on a Monday that bothers me to no end. Sean, do you have maybe, anything? Maybe you should start psychologically tricking yourself. What do you, go like, on. Like, Jared, you won't do it, you 
fucking dweeb. <laughs> you're not going to the gym, you yeah. stupid asshole. That's right. You're not gonna. Go, you're not gonna go to bed. You're gonna stay awake all night like a twelve year old. Yeah, I turn into Willem Dafoe yeah, yeah. from the Spider Man movies. I'm just like two yeah. sides of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like you're not gonna do anything. Oh. No, I swear. I could go to the gym. No, you're a fucking loser. You're a fat fuck. No, I'm gonna stop drinking. I can do it. You can't do anything. Your dad told you you can't do anything. Your mom told you you can't do anything. Your sister, your brother. Oh no, I'll be good. There's a mirror full of lines of gluten over there on the desk. <laughs> Go snort them, you gluten junkie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know? I'll be the, the two-face every yeah. Monday. There's no, the only thing there's no gluten in is shit, which is what you're going to eat on stage every night. <laughs> just completely. And then well, they say that self-talk is like a very oh, underrated. Very, very. You know, and I try, you know, I, I do try to pump myself up, but I do have moments where I go, this is what you do every time. How could you? You piece of shit. You do this all the time. You, you got yourself. This is what you got. I have like a Jewish mother inside my head at yeah. all times. Like, yeah. who, who drinks on a Sunday? How could you? What are you doing? Who eats like that? Like, this is like my constant. That's and, my negative talk. And notice how well that works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's going yeah. well. I mean, that's, you know, I did it today where I was like, oh, I only need 30 minutes to get to the West Village from Brooklyn. And mm. it was like, nope, needed 36. <laughs> did you up. have the voice in your head that goes, who, who thinks they need 30 minutes? You do this all the time. Uh, the How could you think this way? See, my voice has become more exasperated, more like classic Patton. <laughs> way to go. You wanted to give him some vintage Shawnee P, didn't you? You just <laughs> become <laughs> sarcastic with yourself. It's like, oh, well, <laughs> nicely done, shit so, brains. Your negative speak. So my negative speak is a Jewish mother. Yours is a heckler yeah. who knows you too well. It's like, no wonder FX. <laughs> I can't believe they didn't pick up your show. <laughs> Maybe because it's what you, you were two hours late to the meeting that one time. <laughs> I wasn't. But, but yeah, the, the, yours is a heckler who yeah. goes on the road with you. <laughs> Mine's a heckler that you uh uh-huh, a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, that. Nice. <laughs> well done, you fucking fuck. <laughs> but yeah, dude, it's but you know that and that would be my complaint is that Oh, hit the music. It's the guest's turn to complain. They're ready to jump in. They've got lots of problems too. It ain't all about Jared. Let's hear their complaint of the day. Let's hear their complaint of the day. They're invited on the show to have some fun and complain with you. Let's hear that complaint. <laughs> Just what you think. Yeah, let's, let's hear that complaint. The J train, it's like a, it's like a freight train, or just when you think it's going to end. No, there's five more cars hitting you. Uh, <laughs> What's your complaint? Sean? My complaint is that uh, why can't the why can't the world get it? Uh, some, especially New York. Hey, I'm in a hurry. Fucking move it, New York City. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> so your complaint <laughs> is classic New York. Out of the way. <laughs> I'm walking here. <laughs> I'm, come on now. Yeah, you've, you've gone full New York. You, I'm walking here is your complaint. My complaint is why can't I yell at people who are lollygagging on their phones? Why? Because like, I know I'd be the asshole. Here's the thing. Yeah. The phone, we should be allowed to yell at phone people. It is not appropriate to be walking with your phone in front of your face like this. But the problem is the phone is so integrated into our lives. Like if I was, it's so integrated in our lives that we've accepted it as normal. But if I was walking like this and someone bumped into me, I would go, that's me. That's my bat. But no one does that. They they go, what what are you doing? And you go, you're this, if, if you, if we went back to your jungle, with the bitch cougar, yeah. <laughs> the, say, oh, the bi- Craig, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't do the dishes again. Yeah, your bitch. Rawr. And you, but if you were walking through the jungle with a phone in front of your face, and then the the cougar ate you, yeah, yeah, yeah you wouldn't yeah. go, hey. Well, that's what I mean. Like, watch out for me. You I, go, I fucked up. I should have been head on a swivel. I should have been head on. But also, like, at like, peep, the phone is integrated in our lives. Yes, but so is everything else. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. food, a Fitbit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Everything and we don't have it constantly in our faces. No. So when people are just like meandering in the block, and I just want to go like, "Hey, 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get, look alive, buddy. Just like give him like a like a. Ah, I'm right here. And I, everyone look, needs yeah. to walk around with a football coach next to them, dude. dude. To be like, come on, come on, look alive. I'll start dressing like a like a Pete, like a football coach with like the the polo shirt tucked in. Remember the <laughs> pants they wore, the bike. Pants? Yes, I don't know why those didn't. That was a good idea. What the shirt tucked in the bike pants? The bike pants were a good idea. They were athletic pants. Right, but you remember they were not. When we say bike, we mean the brand. No, the brand bike. No, 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 not biker shorts. The the belt buckle. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. They were like baseball pants. Yeah. But you would wear them. They were like knickers almost. Yeah, yeah. And and they were a good idea for a coach. Bike pants. Get a pair of those. (laughs) I can't believe the brand bike hasn't made a hipster comeback of some sort. Uh, maybe in deep hipster circles. I mean, bike was like bike was a look. That's maybe, a vibe. Maybe, maybe like deep cut, <laughs> like <laughs> where the real hipsters are right now in like you know uh, <laughs> uh, Red Ash, New Jersey. Is that They're place? wearing red rec specs yeah. to work. They're just looking like a <laughs> Tony Ku coach. You know what I? You know what I'm predicting is the next is the, the, the blue blockers. Ooh, those will come back because like I saw someone wearing. I forgot who she brought a pair. A blue blockers to the stand and mm. it was like oh blue blockers they're on the way i saw a guy in yeah. yoga uh, he was in um tights and i was like oh male male uh like biker short tights n- yeah but it was like the pants oh i saw a guy at the gym he was wearing the um you know like the 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 yoga pants like the stretch pants that women wear and i was like oh we're my, I'm, I'm about a year away from my nuts just being out. That would be so hilarious if you, if you just saw like a bat, like a ballet dancer, <laughs> like on break, and you were like, "Oh, it's coming, man. Uh, it's coming." <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're pumped to have Sean Patton here yeah. at Mr. Sean Patton on Instagram. Go follow right away. We are sponsored people. Joy Mode, the J Train, is excited to welcome our new sponsor, Joy Mode. Whether you're happy or unhappy with your performance in the bedroom, why not perform even better? Joy Mode's sexual performance booster is like a pre-workout, but for sex. I love this. They sent it to me. It is, it's like, it's very subtle. Mm -hmm. You put it in your your cabinet, and Joy Mode makes, it's natural and science-backed sexual wellness products for men. So if you're a lady listening, this is a fun thing to like bring into the bedroom. I think any guy, any confident guy, would say if you were if you kind of sold this to him as like hey wouldn't it be fun if you had the boner of your life he'd right. be like yes right, i right. want that he would be turned on by the idea of you thinking about it right. the sexual performance booster promotes nitric oxide production penile tissue relaxation and increased drive put simply these enhance sex drive and blood flow resulting in better performance ed prescriptions can come with all sorts of side effects and the -the over-the-counter gas station pills are sketchy and fraudulent that's why joy mode was created because they knew they could do better than everything else on the market it's easy to use 45 minutes to four hour 45 minutes to four hour prior to sexual activity simply tear open the packet and mix with six to eight ounces of water just like your favorite electrolyte packet packet You'll notice better blood flow, better erection, quality, and firmness. We're all looking for quality erect. So uh, (laughs) an increased sexual energy and drive. Boom, that's it. Want to spice things up in the bedroom and boost your sexual performance and do it naturally without nasty prescription drugs? Joy Mode has a special offer for J-Train listeners. Go to usejoymode.com slash J-Train or enter J-Train at checkout for 20, 20, 20, 20% off your first order. That's usejoymode.com slash J-Train for 20% off your first order. Thank you, Joy Mode. You ready to go to the lounge? I mean, I took I took one of those before we started. Yeah, you're rock hard. Because well, I figure you said 45. Yeah, for, I figure what by the time this is done and it hits the streets, I'm gonna be just <laughs> ready to go. You know, I'm gonna be out there <laughs> ready to go. You'll be the bitchy cougar. You know, I'm like, why can't New York understand I'm horny right now? Get out of my way. I'm a horn dog. I got an hour to get rid of this thing. <laughs> luxury lounge. Tall boyfriends are expensive. Hi, Jared. My luxury complaint is dating men over six feet tall is more expensive. These th- these are things I've observed with the six plus men 
past and present who I've dated. One, they often require more food, might steal your leftovers, eat all of something you bought for yourself or at least to share. More expensive when you pay for dates, have to stock the pantry more. Two, they take up more space. I had a full-size bed, small sedan, and six-foot plus boyfriend for most of my 20s. Thank God for my king-size bed and SUV now. Love that we've been finally living with a separate shower and tub, but the shower is tiny. Trying to shower together is a near impossible task. A standard shower tub combo is a nightmare too. Three, the clearance. We are moving together to our dream state soon, where the cost of living is outrageous, but still worth it to us. We're leaving a nice 2,000 square foot, $1,600 a month house in my home state, moving to an area with mostly old small houses with tiny bathrooms and low clearance or A-frame ceilings in a room where we need to put a treadmill or even our bed. He'd hit his head on everything. Thanks for making The Lounge my favorite podcast variant. What do you think? I mean, dating someone six feet tall or above. I mean, that's and it's brave for someone to finally come forward and point that out. You're right. You know, it's up there. You know, when you're attractive, like this person obviously is. Sure. You you get the best of the best. Yes. And the best is usually the tallest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can say that as someone under six feet. I'm just. Well, finally, finally, we as under six feet men. Yeah, yeah. You're under six feet. I am under six feet. But, I, I present six feet. You present six feet. I I identify as six feet. I think you have the right to do that. I'm yeah. five eight and a half, but I always say five eight because mm-hmm. I want to undersell over deliver. So n- everyone is always surprised by my height. I'm five foot even. So you're five. Foot- <laughs> I I'm always. I thought it was five one. I no, I, I, I just jump. I yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. I it. I like hearing people complain. Like here's the answer. To this luxury complaint is like. You know, you're, you're never going to have it all. You know, you, know? you think you got the six foot five Adonis? No. Yeah. Well, good luck paying for the food that comes with it. Good luck finding a bed that fits this asshole. You know, with a five eight gorgeous king like yeah. ourselves, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get the compact love that you'd get in this outrageously sized uh, ogre. The problem is they just can't show us off as easily. That's the problem. You show off a six foot... A big old horse, a big old. This is my. You know? This is why I've always been in favor of lift sun shoes. Yeah, sure. Why wouldn't this be acceptable? And like, what if I came in yeah. with six inch heels, <laughs> and, I, and, and and you got the right. height, you got all the height you want in the sexual department, but you got all the beauties well, like, of or, a five eight partner. Why can't I get extensions put into my calves? You know, I actually have, so I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll reveal, I'll be vulnerable. I have one leg that's an inch and a half longer than the other. Okay. Okay? And I had to have one of the growth plates. You have four growth plates in your leg. Right. When I was like 13, 14 years old, 15, I, I can't remember what day. I was in my teenage years. The, there were options. What do you do? You can either lengthen a leg or you can stop a growth plate to let the other leg catch up. Shit. So... If you lengthen the leg, and then they, you know, the obvious option is you stop a growth plate, it's one surgery, you're done. The option that, like, that you're bringing up is, like, the one that's, like, kind of, like, the surgeries are crazy. They have to, like, break your leg, add a rod, extend it. It's, like, a year's worth of you just sitting out of life to get this extra height. So I was like, of course I'm going to stop the growth plate. I don't need to like get the you, extra like, inch. Is it like they open you up there's like a switch just like off? Yeah, they turn it off. Yeah, they, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. they drill into your knee. Jeez. So, I, But it was a very, it's not an invasive surgery. So it's just like one little drill that okay. they just like crush it. Oh. And I don't think they ever caught up. Like, like you can see, like I'm still got the difference. I think you're technically five foot ten. Then <laughs> that's, that's right. Well, that's happen. why people think I'm taller than I am. Yeah. Because when I measure myself, it's on the short foot. And you stay when you stand tall. So it's you, on the it's balance. on the right foot. I balance. So I, do you have shoes with you? Have like if you look at any picture. So I used to have lifts on one of my left foot okay. when I was in high school. It was a some some bullies would refer to it as the Spice Girl shoe because sure. they were big at the time. Sure. It was really, but. If you look at any picture of me... By the way, so sorry I remind you of a world-famous multi-platinum <laughs> selling power group. <coughs> well, police. What the fuck are you doing well, now? The lift Not being 6'5". Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, the lift would go on the outside of the shoe instead of the inside because you couldn't fit in the shoe. Okay. 
So, but when you look at pictures of me, I'm standing with one on a tippy toe and one regular. It's a very weird thing. I only mean, a rig- only real J Train podcast fans know this. And and, and 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 just to get back to the point here, I want to yes. remind you that uh, that six foot five, just hunk of beef mm-hmm. that's hitting his head. What's he gonna do without you? <laughs> so, just wander around the streets, banging his head, not and starving. Apparently, yes. As he, <laughs> so like he needs you. you J Train podcast at gmail dot com. J Train podcast at gmail dot com. Keep sending a luxury lounge. We're in the lounge. Complain about anything like title of the luxury lounge. Give it a little sauce. We're here with Sean Patton, Mr. Sean Patton on Instagram at me and me Sean Patton dot com. That's his uh, that's his website with all the tour dates. Take out boxes. J Train, thanks for everything you do. I'll get straight to the point. What is up with waitresses and waiters and or others in your group at your table giving you a hard time for not taking your leftovers home in a box? Can a gr- can a girl just eat until she's full and let the rest be thrown out? I hate having to carry a box out of the restaurant that I know will be thrown out in a couple days without being touched. There are very few foods that are actually enjoyable to eat days later. Maybe I'm the minority here, but can we please stop guilting your patrons slash friends into taking the leftovers, uh, leftover food home with them? I don't want it. Leave it at that. I'm not too good for leftovers, but it's a waste of everyone's time. Sean Patton, what do you think? First of all, you got to stop going to that restaurant. I'm out. Those restaurants. Are you kidding me? That are just like, oh, oh, you're not going to take the rest of this salad? Oh, They're, you're leaving this whole portobello? I am oh, so... <laughs> fuck off, you capitalist pigs. Yes. Try to make me... Because you know what happens is they <laughs> give you the box. They get to mark that down as, you know... Um, inventory mm. then they get to raise their prices on the rest of their patrons <laughs> to pay for those extra boxes those fucking monsters all yeah. right you're doing the right thing by standing your ground yes. keeping their overhead lower so they your fellow diners can enjoy a meal for a few bucks less so hey applaud you yeah no take that take that out stand your ground i am so with this listener yeah i do not <clears throat> exactly when he sneezes he needs the two that's a double agreement sneeze. That's a double agreement sneeze. I I I I hate leftovers. I think it, it is. It, I'm with this yeah. person. Chinese food, maybe, maybe. But I'm saying the whole point of me not bringing home leftovers is for my personal health. I know I will eat it. Unlike this person who says yeah. it goes untouched, I'm gonna eat it. I'm definitely gonna eat I'm it. I'm gonna eat it. Yeah. I don't. I, I'm gonna th- mix them together. Yeah, all together <laughs> in a smoothie machine. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. you know, drink it. Yeah. <laughs> I I know myself. If this comes home, it's going in my mouth. And it's what happens is I am proud of myself for not eating all this food. I I did I did myself a favor by leaving out and then what they and what they do is they make it a money thing. I hate when they make oh, not bringing home the leftovers. Whoa, the, the king of Spain here. I, has all the riches in the know, world. And how, do they, how do they know? How do they know you have Castilian blood? That's right. You know how do they know? Then you're like, how do you know? Who do you know? It's it's. <laughs> how do you know? I have all the jewels <laughs> of, <laughs> of 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 uh, Mallorca. Okay, yeah, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. know that. I and they make you feel like you are a piece this of fucking rich. Asshole. But take away the food. It's just. Take it away. Don't no need. And put it in the garbage. Make sure none of those homeless people get their hands exactly, on it. Exactly. That's my that's question. A, that's what are they doing with the leftovers? Yeah, you take it out back. Bring it. Give it to a home. Give yeah. it to the homeless. Why? Who's, no Why one, is it on me? No one said when I when I don't finish my food, I don't say throw it away. <laughs> I never say that. Yeah. You're you're doing that. The, the, the restaurant's making the decision yes. to rob these hobos of no, nourishment. Nobody finishes their meal and then goes. <laughs> Starts spitting on the rest so no just, one else can have it. Just grabbing their crotch and flicking <laughs> crotch pellets all over it. J Train Podcast at Juma.com. J Train Podcast at Juma.com here in the Luxury Lounge. I want to say, I do want to say this oh, real yeah, quick. Please. I do think a pretty good idea is like a food truck yeah. for homeless people only that just goes and picks up leftovers. See, this is called a creative person. You know, you this take, is, the, but the, this is the yeah. thing. We vilify someone yeah. for not eating the leftovers, but. Why are you spending your energy on this? How about the energy to create this food truck? That's actually a great idea. Yeah, yeah. like actually just, hey, when you know, when a customer doesn't want to finish your food, you put it in certain bins, the food truck comes around, picks, picks up the bins, up. has some has some some old bay in there, spices it up. There it goes. Maybe throws it back in the skillet real quick, 
to kill off any germs. Yeah. That, you know, just to make it... No, uh, make it presentable. Make it presentable and then just free, no. free meals. One, there's a protein bucket. There's a carb bucket. There's a salad bucket. Right. They get split up. That's right. all you got to do. Right, right. And just... And then bam. they'll obey. There you, go. there you go. Feeding the people on the streets so they're not rolling up on you being like, give me that box of leftovers. That's right. Now we're keeping the peace. JTrainPodcast.gmail.com. We're sponsored. J Train is brought to you by Me Undies. Have you ever stepped out of the shower and realized that your absolute fave pair of underwear is dirty? Actually, all of your underwear is dirty. It doesn't have to be this way. When you have a free to join membership with Me Undies, you watch your undie anxiety melt away. Let me just tell the listeners right now Me Undies membership, it's the move. You got to do it. Here's, here's what I know about you, Mr. or Mrs. or they listener, okay? Okay. You have a pair of underwear that you actively avoid. You have one pair that you get to the end of the rotation and you go, oh, I got to do the laundry. It's the got to do the laundry pair. The, it's the pair of, of underwear that makes you do the laundry because you don't want to wear that underwear ever again. That's where MeUndies come in. Do yourself a favor. Do yourself the luxury favor of taking that underwear, put it in the garbage right now. And you're signing up for MeUndies. With free shipping and returns on every order, saving on virtually everything they make, exclusive sales, and early access to their newest stuff, there's kind of no reason not to join. New prints drop monthly, so there's always something new to see, but you can always skip delivery from the month or even cancel any time, no questions asked. Get super soft undies, bralettes, or socks shipped right to your door and live a more comfortable life knowing you always have what you need at your fingertips when you step out of the shower. MeUndies has a great offer for my listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15, 15, 15% off and free shipping right to your door. And for a limited time, if you sign up for their free-to-join MeUndies membership, you get 25% off your first or membership item. That's, I mean, people. To get 25% off your first membership item or 15% off your first order and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash JTrain. That's MeUndies.com slash JTrain. MeUndies.com slash JTrain. Here with Sean Patton at Mr. Sean Patton on Instagram. Go follow immediately. He has so many great videos up right now. Luxury Lounge, not a gluten-free vegan. Real quick, I'm going to do this MeUndies thing. You're going to do it? And it, and that's that says a has a a, a thunder thigh. Yeah, yeah, as yeah. Myself. Do you know what I'm talking about? We though? tear through underwear. Tear them. Up. Tear, tear them through up. underwear. We're not these six five. No, you know with dolphins. All this wind with yeah, the, no. This, with this gate between our. No, 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 no. Thigh gap. Fuck thigh. no. Yeah, yeah. More like thigh slap. Because it's just. <laughs> Pa-pow, it's, it's yeah. like uh, it's like my thighs are applauding for the rest of my body. But you know. You know? <laughs> You know, <laughs> you're doing great. You have, the, you, have the, you have the negative voice. Oh, Sean, doing but, it again. Then you have your thighs clapping for you. Letting, that's why. Yeah, yeah. That's why you're late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the thighs are great. Yeah. Um, you have that underwear that I'm talking about, though. Like I'm not wrong. It's the the it's the oh, yeah. it's the do your laundry underwear. Oh yeah, and it's annoying. Oh yeah, old school boxers. Not a gluten free vegan. This is a very specific complaint. Yeah. Jared, thank you so much for creating this safe space. Okay, so my problem. I, like many millennials, enjoy visiting bougie coffee shops for overpriced cold brew. Yeah, I love it. Right off the bat, respect. Of, of, absolutely. If I'm, that was your complaint, I'd be like, yep, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> I am with you. I have three places I rotate between in my city. I like the idea of occasionally treating myself even more by purchasing a treat at said coffee shop. You know, those cookies or muffins they have lingering on display at checkout. I have celiac, so I eat gluten-free. And many places offer a gluten-free option. Great. The issue is that every single gluten-free option is also vegan. I'm not vegan. In fact, I love dairy and eat it every day. Thank you for selling something gluten-free, but for gosh sakes, can it may be made with real butter? Many thanks. Again, stop assuming we're plant-based too. What do you think? This is well, horrible. This is interesting because I, I, you know. I never noticed this. Learning experience right there. Well, they're trying to kill two birds with one but stone. But I, I, I always thought that the celiac gluten-free, I just had vegan and cahoots. I just was like, of course. Yeah. It's part of the thing. Yeah. It's like anxiety without, you know, uh, cocaine. <laughs> That's right. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, you just thought it's that... It's like if, the, if the depression comp- without alcohol. Yeah, yeah. If like, you're complaining about depression, right. you must be drinking a ton. But right. That like, done, right. One is not the same. It's like lesions without AIDS. It's yeah, like, you know, sure. it's, it's, it's all there. It's like, oh yeah, this is... what well, It's like toothlessness without... Meth. Meth, yes. I thought they were together. <laughs> I thought they were one you're and one. You're missing a tooth. 
There must be men. Meth- you must equation. be a meth addict. If you're celiac, yeah. you must you also be vegan. be vegan. Well, this is the pro- I totally agree. You are now wow. that, that the real issue here is they are lumped in with an annoying group of people. You know, like it's yeah. like I get this a lot when you know, and this happens a lot. And I, this might sound bad, but when I go to Boca, sure, they go. Like I have people, I go, yeah, I'm going to Boca to see my parents, and then people go, Jewish, yeah, yeah you know, and they yeah. go, is Jew in Boca, and I'm like, right. I get what you're saying, but I like going there. Like they make it this negative thing when it's like not negative at all. I mean, like I've ex- like I've experienced that with like you know New I'm Orleans, like, you must get right or, something or or like when like my 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 you know my my partner's Jewish and yes. she's like you know I'm going. To Tel Aviv for Purim, people are yeah. like Jewish. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> like maybe she no. <laughs> maybe she just enjoys the beaches of Tel Aviv. <laughs> Jewish. Yeah, it's just like it's like this weird well, like. I didn't know neg. Boca was that Jewish. Boca's just like famously Jewish. You know, it's like it's it? it's like Del Rey. It's like also Seinfeld. You know, they have ah, those episodes yeah, where yeah, they yeah. go to Southern yeah. Florida. I get it, but it's also said in this tone. Uh. That you get lumped in with like their, you can see in their Bro. mind they're imagining their most annoying Jewish yeah. friend. And I'm like, yeah. And, and what you want to say is like, yeah, but like fun. The, you know, sand, like, the sand in the kefilta. Yeah. By the, the way, he's, you know, uh, like, their, uh, Jewish food is very underrated. Interesting. I love it all. You love it all. I love it all. I'm not Jewish. We're love Passover it all. season. Sebastian Maniscalco has a great bit about. Is it 45 minutes long? It's 45 minutes of <laughs> the Jewish food sucks. <laughs> but he's talking about Passover food. Like, yeah, Passover food fucking sucks. It's a plate of fucking oh, ornaments to tell a story. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This, is, this isn't what, we, this is like, I mean, on the subject of wasting food, yeah, this is the food we, we're, we're, we're playing games with. Yeah. You know, the good food is like, you know, give me a matzo ball soup. Give me a deli sandwich, yeah, a, a like, corned beef, corn beef. Uh, give me some pastrami. pastrami. Yeah. yeah. Those are all Jewish, though. They, you know, yeah. the problem is they, they're they not, you know, brisket. Brisket. Love a brisket. Take take that, Texas. That's right. You know, it is. We, a, that, well, that is yeah. the, the funny part. Of the Jewish brisket, like if Most you, it yeah. would be a funny sketch to watch a Texan get invited to the Jewish high holidays and them being told, oh yeah, we got brisket. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, boy, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love a brisket sandwich. And you're like, hey, well, not a sandwich. It's, you know, it's got potatoes. And they're like, potatoes? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> oh, like French fries? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, dude, believe, believe me, whenever, I, whenever I'm like talking about going to New Orleans, people are like, oh, you go, going down there, going go down there, get, 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 get a sandwich. I'm like, that's... I mean, yeah, it's wildly but that's offensive. Not- <laughs> it's wildly, yeah. Like you go, oh, Boca. Yeah, I get it all the time. So with this person who's going to like, you know, their whole life, they have celiac disease. They have a serious issue. They cannot have gluten. They cannot have gluten, and then they're like, yeah, but I still want to enjoy myself. I still don't want to be, you know, next to the pita. Like they almost have to like be lumped in with the pita people. Right, right, right. They're like, oh, do you? Th- oh, I have celiac. Um, do you also throw paint at people in fur coats? They're like, no. no I, yeah, I, yeah, why yeah, am yeah, I in yeah, this group? Yeah. Oh, I have celiac. Oh, are your teeth missing because of your meth addiction? <laughs> now, I'm, next time I see a guy on the streets, no teeth, you know, open bleeding from open sores, asking for money, I'm, just, I'm not going to assume. No. It's a meth head. No. It could it just be. Something. Crack. It might be crack. Or, you know, someone with a bad dentist. Or vegan. Vegan. Or probably <laughs> vegan. J Train Podcast. Give me a com. slice of sirloin with butter on it, but no bread. That's right. I'm I'm all right. I'm I'm with this guy <laughs> or person. We don't know. Them. We're sponsor people. I hear you. Solo stove. I, I have a feeling you're gonna like the sponsor. J Train Podcast is brought to you by Solo Stove. You can finally step outside again, ride a bike, go camping, make make great memories. And a smokeless fire pit from Solo Stove makes your outdoor moments even more memorable. With Solo Stove, you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the fire. No more dodging the smoke. I I love what Solo Stove the opportunity it presents. You have a home, okay? You might have a backyard, you might have a deck, you might have a roof. Solo Stove takes an area that you're not using and turns it into your new favorite part of your home. A place you can have a beer, 
Make the fire, go outside, get away from the kids, get away from your husband, get away from your wife, have a little private moment or invite some friends over. Hey, we're gonna put a fire out, we're gonna have some beers. What an opportunity. And upgrade your backyard with a solo stove fire pit. It's the perfect excuse for getting outside and spending more time with family and friends. I just said this, and solo stove fire pits are brilliantly engineered. That's a tough phrase to say, brilliantly. Brilli- brilliantly engineered. Maybe Brill- if I saw brilliant, brill- brilliantly engineered. It's br- not. I mean, it's it's not not easy. It's not. It's not like it's not like what's the thing called? Solo stove. Solo stove flows off the that, top. I mean, that is. I can't. I can't hold on to that phrase. Mm-mm-mm. It's jumping out. Made with premium grade stainless steel and a 360 degree airflow system with that maximizes efficiency while minimizing smoke. And you don't have to be Grizzly Adams to use it. Your fire is blazing in minutes with a few bits of starter. And since it's perfectly portable, you can take Solo Stove with you on camping trips and anywhere. Chill times are had. See, that's the point. You bring it. You get that Solo Stove. You can create a whole area. Then go break it down. We're moving the yeah. area. Love it. Shop now and get up to 30% off fire pits all month long and use promo code JTRAIN, JTRAIN, JTRAIN at checkout to get an extra $20 off plus a lifetime warranty and free 30-day returns. Just go to solostove.com and remember, you get $20 off when you use promo code JTRAIN. You're at the nightclub. You just had your third round of yes. vodka bottle service. Mm-hmm. The boys are hungry. Fire up the Stolo there stove right there at the table. <laughs> get out that marshmallow. Cook some bris- brisket. <laughs> brisket. You're going to make a brisket. <laughs> Luxury Lounge. Healthcare heroes need free parking. Oh, oh, now we're getting real. J Train. Feather Feather. Love the podcast. All your content. My luxury complaint is about parking at work. I work at a large pediatric hospital in Canada as a nurse. The hospital has a staff parking lot, but the wait list is upwards of five years to get in. Wait list? What is this? Packer season Build tickets? A, a, for a parking lot? Wait, is this shit Canada? Yeah. So they're not building parking lots as often as possible as they do here in the States? I mean, this is insane. I feel like they're building a parking lot right now outside. Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere's a parking lot. They build Every- another parking lot. <laughs> On the parking lot. That, they do that. Parking garages. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, the hospital is located in central area, so parking around the hospital is expensive, upwards of $150 a month. Well, that should be worked into your contract. They yeah. should go, hey, here's your parking stipend because there's a five-year wait list. Also, who's getting... Getting off that wait list is every like, it, are you in a retirement party and you're like, good luck? And like, everyone's just making sure, get them off the get fucking off parking. The wait list. Also, they shouldn't be driving. They should be, someone should be picking them up. Our transit system is a joke. At the beginning of the uh-huh. pandemic, they removed parking fees because they were concerned about virus spreading uh, from the buttons. Oh, the free parking yeah. lasted from April 2020 to September 2020. They allegedly lost out on over $2 million in parking fees, so I think that's why it's so short-lived. Since we work shift, hour, uh, since we work, shift work, we were able to quote unquote trade parking tickets. Someone coming on nights would be able to bring someone on the day shift a ticket. This is crazy. They've created a system so that they don't have to keep paying these tickets. Uh, and then wow. and when you went to pay, it would only cost two to three dollars, which is more tolerable than the fifteen dollars a day they charge. Well, they recently changed to an online system that you have to register your license plate with, so no more two dollar parking for me. My complaint is the fact that I literally have to pay to park my own car for twelve hours at my work when there are no other options. We're toted as healthcare heroes and we can't even get a decent price to park where we work. Thanks for allowing me to air my grievances. Healthcare zero. Dude, I mean in all honesty, like that, um, that the fact that they don't have free parking or at least someone picking them up or like rides, it's kind of insane. Like my brother was a surgical tech for okay. a while. He's now he's a pharmaceutical guy now, but like he's in farm. Pharma- he's um, he sells medical equipment now. Mm-hmm. But when he left the surge, they don't make shit. Well, this is you're the- shocked at how little they make. This is the problem: is you live in a capitalistic society. Right. That's that's fine. We all admit to that. Yes. And then you have jobs like this that are necessary. Yeah. And then you fuck with the people who are doing them. That's why your brother's in pharmaceutical sales or yeah. medical device sales. He goes, I'm out of here. Yeah. Fuck 100% it. We and it's like these people who are good natures, good people have a a skill. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, and and like the idea that the town was like. Oh, they're trading tickets, so they don't have to pay two to three dollars a day. We're moving to an online one, and they're gonna get—we're gonna get our fifteen dollars, whether these healthcare workers like it or not. It's like 
at a certain point, because here's the thing. These are skilled laborers. These are high-end laborers. These are people who had to get extra, you know, um, education, had to get, uh, you know, certifications. So for this person, they go, you know, they, in the, in the world of economics, they move on to somewhere else. They go, fuck it. I'm not going to be a nurse anymore. I'll I'll take this skill and this, you know, this ability and put it towards something else. And now you're you're working for the big pharma and you're, 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 yeah, pushing pills. And now you have a more, you have a better pill pusher. Right, right, right. Because they were like, well, fuck it. I don't want to, I'm joining, you know, team devil. And eventually they're going to, you know, someone or like, or like one of these fucking, one of these paper pushers who decides like, nah, we're not going to give him the, the parking. That guy sits on his ass all day just pounding poutine. This is Canada, you said, Yeah, right. right. <laughs> just, or slamming down, you know, burritos or whatever, you know, whatever's nearby. And then a few years go by, oh, he's got high cholesterol. Oh, he has a stroke. Mm. Oh, he ends up in a hospital. Oh, guess what, though? We don't have any nurses to, <laughs> to, to clean your bedpan and yeah. wipe up your bed sword. And you know what we do have? A slop. bitchy cougar. But what we got is a bitchy cougar. It's going to eat you. And then, so bye. <laughs> Goodbye. You're out. You're That's, food for the bitchy cougars. Yeah, we feed you to the cougar. That's it's the just, only option like, we have left. But I don't. I just don't see how the capitalist mindset doesn't see the that it's all cyclical. I, so, it is. Um, and listen, know? I... I I believe in incentive based sure um financial gains. W- yeah. yeah I believe in incentives I believe that hu- yeah. as humans we are drawn to incentives I I don't think that's a I don't think anyone could disagree with that so why aren't we playing to that why aren't we making it as easy as possible to park at work for someone who you need is going to clean bedpans yeah is going to is going to flip obese people part over part of their day is spent figuring out how to work their way through the $15 parking yeah. get out of here just fucking build them another you got the money you rich fucks <laughs> J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train. I'm talking about the people who build parking at, lots, not the nurses. No, no, no. Yeah. We, we listen. We got these it. These parking lot landlords, luxury lounge. And we're here with Sean Patton at Mr. Sean Patton. Go follow immediately at Mr. Sean Patton. Great videos. He's got a special coming out. So you, it's the special. You taped it in New Orleans. In New Orleans a few months ago. Uh, we're putting the finishing touches on finishing touches on it now. Yeah. Um, Where did you tape it? It looked like the coolest Tipitinas. What is Tipitinas? Tipitinas is an old music venue in uh, Uptown New Orleans that uh, it's been around for a, a while. It's been mm. it's 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 a it's a very if you know New Orleans, you know Tipitinas. So here's here's my it's question. It's owned by a band. It's owned by a band called Galactic now, which is what okay. drew me into because they started there, kind of got big, mm. and then when the when the when Tipitinas was like, hey, it, the owners were going to sell it, they bought it. And kept it exactly like it is, dude. Well, that's the thing about New Orleans is like it. It the coolest thing that I learned about was like all these bars people have residencies at. Well, like music, like you the, mean, the music, the oh, band. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. reminded me of comedy. Like yeah. where, do, like the comedians when we come back to New York City after a weekend on the road, we come yeah. back to the cellar, we hang out. Yeah, you know, yeah. you work on your jokes. Right. I didn't know that same type of thing happened in New yeah. Orleans where people would just come back. They got a bar they go to, and they're gonna play. Yeah. And they're yeah. going to like, you know, if you, you know, because we have like, you know, the listenership here, they want to go to New Orleans, but they want to have the New Orleans time. Right. What's a place they would go to? I mean, if you're going to, if, if you've never been or if you're going for the first time or if you really just want like, in my opinion, like a very classic New Orleans experience, you mm. don't want to like, I, I would say go to Frenchman Street. Okay. It's it's in the quarter. It's close to Bourbon Street. You can see all that madness if you yeah. want to. But Frenchman Street does have like an authentic, like it's a lot of live music bands. I went to a, a bar on Fre- bars. I went to a bar on Frenchman and yeah. I saw this band that was doing their residency. Yeah. And it was like a 12 piece brass band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like very well known. Yeah. You know, and it, I, I can't remember the name. I wrote it down, but like literally I'm doing the limbo underneath the trombone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're like right up. And it was like such a like I think people want the classic experience. Yeah. They don't want to be holding a grenade. On bourbon, a, a hand grenade, <laughs> hand grenade, which like that clears it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if, I'm, if they didn't know, I was talking about the drink. The yeah. drink called the hand grenade, but I'm like he's talking about a hand grenade, yeah, folks. Yeah. Like, what kind of grenade do you hold? Is there a foot grenade? You fucking goof. Yeah. <laughs> but no, they, yeah, yeah. They, I mean, like, but the the Bourbon, Frenchman Street is very like introduction to New Orleans. Hey, here you go. Once you're there, you learn about like you know. Go to Le Bon Ton on Thursday nights to see, I think it's Hot 8 Brass Band that performs there every week. And they're 
fucking fantastic. Tipitina's, you know, every musical What's act. What's the wine bar that's like? Bacchanal. That place. It's rated like the best wine bar in the country. I mean, I'd, I'd argue it's one of the best bars. Like one of the actual, like there are. It's, I've been I, there. I think it's the most unique bar in the country. It's pretty amazing. That backyard yeah. at Bacchanal. It's awesome. And they got music playing. Yeah. And it's a little bit farther away. Yeah, it's down in the ninth. It's down in the lower ninth. Yeah. I go there. I've been there. I think twice as a board lord. Yeah, charcuterie up the. Uh, yeah, they, I they, mean, they, you must have walked I, in there. I, it was, oh God, you walk in there and there's vino and charcuterie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, and there and was, a band playing. A little band. Playing, respect little was paid. Back. I took off my crown. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 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 walking in. I found my kingdom. Yeah, wow! I'm surprised they got you out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I just I was just sitting there with a scepter. You're like, Jared, yeah. we haven't seen you in years. This is where I live now. Scepter, just a fork, and just <laughs> some more soap posada. <laughs> Luxury lounge. Guy screaming in weight room. Jared, thanks for giving us a space to laugh oh, and complain buddy. during a very sp- stressful final season. Here's my complaint. I'm a freshman in college and lift at my school's gym every morning before class. There's this guy that's always there as well who likes to yell super loud before every set and after every single rep. Do we hate these people? Dude. You don't need to do this. They know, And they know that. They know that. They know that. I mean, a little, uh, that I'll accept. Or like, a, or like an earnest, like, Ugh! That's earnest. Or, you know, but then some, or, or like an actual, like, enthusiastic, like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. For the guy who nuts because he just lifted so much fucking weight. Yeah, I mean, like, not only that, he sings out loud between sets. Oh my god, this is he. This guy's putting on a parade yeah, at knows. the gym. He knows. He knows. When, knows. Whenever this happens, you can see everyone in the weight room looking at each other and silently making fun of this dude. I literally play music on noise canceling AirPods and can still hear him. I have to turn my music to the highest possible volume to drown him out. Now this guy's gonna have a hearing issue because yeah, this guy's yeah. got to fucking sing. Exactly. You know, sing, you know, down with the sickness so you're he can not, pump yeah. himself but up. He's going to have a hearing issue and not hear someone yelling, help, help, <laughs> this 210-pound f- <laughs> bench fell on my kid. Is there anyone who can lift it off? Is there anyone who can power lift it off? Who will save the babies getting trapped under the barbells at the gym? Exactly. I literally play music. Oh, I have to turn my music to the I, I mean, I love listening to Taylor Swift when I work out, but I don't need to hear uh, her music completely obliterate. I don't need her music obliterating my eardrums. I mean, I would get the whole screaming this, uh, screaming this if, if this was a powerlifting or bodybuilding gym. But come on, buddy. This is a public gym at a public university. Can this guy just stop so I can peacefully get my daily sweat in so I can be mentally sane for the rest of the day? Sincerely, getting buff is getting tough. Love that sign off. I, you know what it also is? It's actually a safety issue. The idea uh-huh. that you're lifting weights and all of a sudden you hear, ah, and you go, where? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. happened? Is someone dying? Yeah. Like, that is, you're, you're distracting other people from a, from a task that you shouldn't be distracting from. I mean, I could say this. Dangerous. Jim's a dangerous sure, place. Sure, sure. Getting buff, getting tough. I could say this to you. Mm-hmm. Um, you talked about being sane for the rest of your day. Yes. Doing, do, get out there doing your thing. That's good. That means you've got the rest of the day. That means you've got a life. Yes. Trust me, Yelly guy, that's all he's got. This is all he's got. That's all he's got. Yeah. All he's got is drawing attention to all the weight he can lift at the gym every day at class. You're or very in, right in, because he needs this attention because he gets it nowhere else. Gets it nowhere else. You should just go up to him and go, hey, man, I'll be your friend if you shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Or, you okay? Is everything okay at home? Like, Go, go, go talk to him. Just be like, you okay, man? Or, or like after he's... What do you think he would say? Uh, when he's like... Rah, rah, rah. I don't know what, what this is. Lat, mm. lat list. Something like that, yeah. Rah, rah. And he <laughs> drops the weight. Just be there. Just make sure you're chewing gum. Just go. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge him to more. <laughs> and then just yeah. walk away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then make him feel so insecure that he lifts so much that he fucking rips a lat. And he's out. He's gone. Can't. Six to eight weeks. Yeah, he can't. You know? Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. Or no. what about going louder? What oh, about fighting fire no. with fire? With fucking you go, with napalm. Yeah, you, uh, and you, it doesn't matter how heavy the weights are. You're just louder than him. You know, yeah. he goes, Ugh, and you go, Aah! and now oh. it becomes, uh, yeah. you know, this is like a, you know, it's a competition. I mean, you said university, right? Mm-hmm. So, so if you've got anyone in the AV, in the, you know, 
get, get in there the night before, install some Bose speakers, <laughs> That's right. wear a little lav mic. <laughs> yes. So that the loudest you yell is still amplified. Yes. And this guy just feels so insecure he never comes back. You know? Yeah, that's the only way to go. <laughs> <laughs> just reverb. Like, I'm so, that yeah. guy's so ripped. <laughs> His screams bounce off every corridor. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Do we have time for one more, Shelby? Yeah, let's do luxury it. Luxury Lounge, people. Keep sending your complaints. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Title of the Luxury Lounge. Give us a little sauce. Um, here with Sean Pat. Sean, thank you. This has been fantastic. Buddy, you're I, you're the, a wonderful the honor's guest. All mine. I'm so happy you came to the lounge. The honor's all mine. Luxury Lounge, iced coffee. Second second iced coffee reference. We've had a lot of iced coffee talk. All right. I like this. Jared, Feather Feather, love the pod and the luxury lounge song. My dad hates the song. Uh, I look forward to now, singing. Wait, was that you saying that or this person? They love the song. But you no, said my, my, da- no, your dad hates the song. My dad hates the song. Jealousy. I know. Fathers can be jealous of their That's sons. That's true. I look forward to singing and dancing along to your off-key tune every week. Well, thank you. On to my complaint. I'm a Massachusetts native, such as yourself, so I hope you'll understand. I was Wait, ju- real quick, is this your dad? Because <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like a sarcastic... Yeah, is he fucking with me? Yeah, your dad. <laughs> dad? Here's my, here's my complaint. My son has a podcast <laughs> with all these listeners. Yeah, and he sings an awful tune. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm a Massachusetts native, such as yourself, so I hope you'll understand. I was just visiting Phoenix, Arizona, and my boyfriend and I went to a bagel place. Very Panera vibes, but local. I ain't getting a bagel in Arizona. There's, a, there's, a, there's other things you're going to get in Arizona against your will, though, and one of them's fucking that green chili sauce, or is that, yeah. or is that Colorado? Yeah. Well, I'm just saying I'm getting a breakfast burrito, breakfast taco in, in Arizona. Yeah, well, no? let's, let's hear the rest of it, because okay. I'm with you on this. The register guy taking the orders was clearly in training, needing help with everyone's orders, so the line is long. We get there, and I ask for an iced coffee. He can't find it and ask for help, which is met with the, with it's cold brew here. I don't like this at all. And that's what I get. My issue is that iced coffee isn't the same as cold brew. My non-coffee drinker boyfriend wouldn't listen, so in case you didn't know, cold brew is coffee made with cold water left 24 to 48 hours to brew. It's stronger and more caffeinated. Iced coffee is just regular coffee made with hot water that is now cooled and served over ice. You literally just put coffee in the fridge. They taste different, but since it's technically a coffee with ice, I can't complain. Thank you for the safe space to air our grievances. Hope this isn't too long. So I'll add a sentence to make it longer. What do we? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> hope this isn't too long. You did it. You're here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, <clears throat> I am a very big cold brew over iced coffee guy. See, I am. So let me. I let, can tell let's come together. Yeah. You're a cold brew over iced coffee guy. Yeah. I am someone who, like her boyfriend, would go, "It's cold coffee." Yeah. I really don't see the difference. I, I the difference seems to be two dollars extra for a cold brew. Here's the problem. Yeah. We can come together to understand that most of these coffee places have no understanding of the difference between the two. They're just calling it cold brew. Right, right. And this idea that if you're asking for a cold coffee, they they should be questioning you if they have such a deep difference between the two. Because they don't yeah. question you. I went to a place, I ordered a iced coffee, they go, and they bring it out, and it was just like milk. And I'm like... I go, I, I go, do you have black iced coffee? They go, cold brew? I go, uh, again, this isn't, uh, uh, uh. do you see what I mean? Like they didn't even do, they're not differentiating. They just, some places, with the language has gotten so off the reservation yeah. that people are just, that, that they go, to some people cold brew is just black co- iced coffee. To other people, iced coffee is like a mixed milk and coffee with sugar. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, no. It, and this is why, this is a Massachusetts native. Massachusetts has different ordering techniques for the coffee. Like a large regular is a coffee with milk and sugar. Right, right. Okay. That's a large regular. Right. You know what I mean? If you say that. Yeah, you have to say black coffee in Massachusetts. You have to say, I'll have a black coffee. Yeah, if you say regular, you're getting I'll have a large okay. regular is a coffee with cream and sugar. So do you, you see, we need to have a centralized language. The government has to get involved. We need to have a chart at every place right next to the Heimlich maneuver that yeah. tells you the coffee order language. Don't you think? I think every coffee shop in the world should have a black coffee line and it's hot or cold. That's it. That's a great idea. That's yeah. it. That's it. The you walk get, up, you go hot, there's cold. There's two choices Large, in this hot, line. Small, cold. Yes. That's it. And cold brew, hot. That's it. It's just like 
that you don't like the credit card versus the cash line. Right, right. I, I think you you're want absolutely sugar and right. All that shit, it's all over. It's there. all over there. Yeah, it's like, but just walk up. It's like hold, large hold, large hold, large yes. hold, large. Hold. You just get confused. And then, right. <laughs> yes, and we hire everyone from those steak places in Philly uh, to uh, run the lines. Yo, fuck it, you fuck it, you fucking drink. What are you, what are you drinking? You fuck you, what I call you, fuck you, piece of shit. Your mother wants it cool. Yeah. If, if someone says like large Luke, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Throw him out. You don't get a Luke. We don't got Luke. What's Luke for me? This piece yeah. of shit. I know a guy named Luke. Luke. Luke Presley. Get the fuck out of here. Luke yeah. liked it hot. You get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. That, this is. See, this is creative. And also, to, to your point earlier, yeah. Don't it just people don't don't order bagels outside of certain cities. If you're in Arizona so, and no. you say let's get a bagel, I go. Let's get you to the insane asylum because you yeah. are doing. <laughs> we gotta talk to a therapist. Yeah. You are. Your brain is cream cheese, buddy. <laughs> All right. Well, you are. You have lost your way. Like the idea that they're visiting Arizona. They're like, I, I don't know. Well, maybe they're not visiting. Maybe they're just messages as native. But like the idea that I'm waking up. Uh, you know, I want the breakfast burrito, the right. breakfast taco, the the green chili sauce. Like, there's great things to be eaten. Some huevos rancheros with extra peyote. You I'm, know, <laughs> I'm going to Denver. I mean, the idea that I'm going that like the Denver. I'm getting a Denver omelet. I'm getting. I, well, dude, you know what's actually great in Denver? What's that? A lot of the they they they, they love their uh, they love their like scrambles. I know this. You're right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I'm yeah, down. that, that is down. a that because give me a big ass bell pepper. You go to a place that has skiing, they know how to do a hearty breakfast. Oh yeah, bro. They know how to treat you. They know, yeah. and you know their breakfasts are made for naps post breakfast. Yeah, but it's really made for someone to be active to and like be full throughout the, the day. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. for me, I'm like, okay, nap time. It's done. But I, yeah. I am looking for you. You reminded me of something I needed to be reminded of today. What's that? The Denver breakfast scramble. Oh, okay. I, 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 <laughs> I thought you were just like, I need a nap before I go skiing. Yeah, no, 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 no. I need to eat. Wait, do you ski? I've skied. I've, I don't ski. It would be a lie. I learned it like 22 or 21, and then I've like I can do it, but I'm a one run like, guy. I feel like if you had the because if you have the shorter leg, you just always coast. <laughs> You always coast Slide left. Slide to the left. Yeah, like, <laughs> Where's Jared going? Oh, it's a leg thing. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. He's got to aim right as he starts every slope. Sean Patton, thank uh, you for coming in the lounge. This is fantastic. Thank you for having me in the lounge. This was. That, did you enjoy? Do you feel refreshed? Yes, I feel nice. And I feel good. it's good to know that there are others out there who I know have similar issues. Yeah, people. And if you're on no. YouTube, I want you to subscribe to the channel because if you're here this far. You, you enjoy watching this on YouTube. You are pretty deep in. If you're a podcast person, go subscribe to the YouTube channel. You might need it at some point. Sunday night, you're up in the middle of the night. But all of you listening, watching, wherever you are, go follow Sean Patton at Mr. Sean Patton on Instagram. Me, Sean Patton is his website, me, Sean But I'm going to have it all attached in the bio of this episode. I'm Jared Fried. We're here every Thursday in the lounge. We'll be back next week. Boom. <laughs>